Okay, this is the um, video that I posted on the Facebook page to ask people's opinion on the sitting and other... Hi everyone. So with not a lot of work, Maureen helped me to sit and talk at the same time. Now if we can just help Tom look less awkward. Hey, it's not my fault. I'm just made this way. And so as you can see, I have two Lenkas. One is talking. And you can see the outline of the mask I have on that. And then I have sitting, and you can see the outline of the mask I have for that. And then you see I have a whole lot of keyframes happening. So this is just a duplicate of the talking, and then I wanted to go to another action from that to see how it would look. And I chose idea thinking it would be easy because she really didn't do a lot of movement. She just points up. However, she does a lot of swaying back and forth. So this actually was harder for me to keyframe. And I look at that and I think that doesn't look so great. However, when you're far enough away, if you're not zoomed in, it doesn't look as bad. So two things to really think about is how close up you are and also the colors of the clothing. If you have a red top and black pants, you're going to see any errors much easier. So that might be something you really wanna consider is to make sure that the clothing can help mask any of those issues. The other thing is really keeping the hands above the waist because of the masking. If the hands go down, I'll show you that in one minute. Um, well, let me try it here. If I changed the idea to say checking watch, look, her hand is already gone. Let me detach this. I would have to bring that down and then you see her legs as she's standing. So that really doesn't work. So you'd have to do some more complicated masking to be able to do that so it would be possible, but it would be more work. So we're gonna do the easy way. Let me bring that back to idea. So let's look at this keyframe. Here she is. And then you see there's another keyframe here. I am going to delete that keyframe to show you why I did that. Now watch where what she does. She moves. And it doesn't look like much. But when I had been doing it zoomed in, you can see that her she's matching here, but the minute she moved a little bit. So I just, right when I see that it's starting to move, I'm going to make sure it's highlighted, add an animation, and I'm just going to use position. I'm going to take that end one and keyframe and bring it closer. And at that end, I'm just going to shift it over a little bit. The up and down can look like she's just moving, so that looks okay. Here she's... I might not have done the keyframe at the right moment. There, that looks better. Then as she goes up, I want to fix this one a little bit. Now again, when you're looking this far away, it's not really going to show that much um, if you have a little bit off. But that is basically all that I did to be able to do that. So let's go over here. And I haven't tried SAD yet, so it will be a little bit of a joint effort here. Let me hide her for a minute and let me show you the mask for sitting. All I did was I used a rectangle. Let me bring it down a little bit. And I just made it thin. I chose, it'll just be hit or miss. You're just going to decide what you want, what might look good. So right here, what you will notice on the one that I have is 
it's very close to the hip here. And that's because her hand is so close. Here, her hand is further. So here I went as close as I could get. Otherwise, you would have seen her hand right here. Let me detach it. See, there's her hand. And that's what I noticed the first time I did it. So you're going to want to get as close as you can, but not too, too far in. You want to try to get as close as you can, and then remember to attach it again. And then all you do is you select the mask, you select the character, right click and mask. Now, I'm going to do it right now, but that's masking more because I already had it masked. Then I masked the top. And for that, I used a rectangle. And the reason I used a rectangle is I needed for it to be far apart on the edges. Because, for instance, when she does talking, her hands go out. And if your mask is too close, when her hands go out with her expression, they're going to get cut off. So that's not what we want. So here, we're not really having to worry about that too much because it's so close. Um, she's just keeping her hands to her face. I'm going to just lower the opacity for that. But I'm going to match it as closely to the sitting as I can. So what I'm going to do is first, I'm just going to unmask. So you can see where my mask I did sitting. I'm going to unmask the top hat, the action. And you can see all, you can see both body parts. So right underneath, she's standing behind, right behind there. It's not the sitting anymore. This is a sitting and this is a standing. So I'm going to select both of those and I'm going to mask it. And then I'm just going to play around with this and detach it. Do I need more? Nope, that would be too much. You can see the pants. I can, if I go up too high, I'm going to see the cutoff. So I'm just going to make sure it matches. I'm going to undo that just to make sure I'm at where I was. Now I have my two characters match, uh, masked. Here, she looks good. Now she starts to move. So right here, where she's good, right before she starts to move, select sad, add an animation, position. Oh, let's see what smooth looks like. Grab the last keyframe, move her back over. And let's see, that keyframe might be too late. And I might want that a little bit earlier. It's going over a little bit here, but such a little bit that I'm not sure that's going to matter when you're zoomed out more. And now you can see she's moving again. So I'm going to add another keyframe. And then I'm going to just move it a little bit. Now you could get into this and do some, if I add another one, you might want to also add a rotation. If you think you might need that, you can do that. I haven't used it because I, I didn't want to get that complicated. But let's see, right here, she's moving over a little bit. So I'm going to put it over here. And now it seems a little bit better. Here she's moving back out and back. So I would put more keyframes on that. But from far away, it's still going to look pretty good. So that's how I did it.
and you'll just have to experiment with the different actions and the different um, different emotions and the different p actions of the character that you might want to do and see what works best for you.